Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Terminal Tinkering, the podcast where we play around with electronics, tinker in the terminal, and just hack away at whatever I can get my hands on. I'm Jeff Butts from the Mac Observer, and this week we're going to look at some terminal tips and tricks. We're going to install Homebrew, the missing Mac OS package manager, and we're going to play around with some videos using FFmpeg. With that in mind, let's go ahead and dive right in and start with some terminal tips and tricks. And let's start off by talking about the most common commands, the essential terminal commands that you need to know. The first one is CD, and that stands for change directory. And so I would type CD downloads to get into my downloads directory. Next is ls, which you just saw me do. That is a list command that lists all of the files that are in the directory that you're in. If you type ls minus l, that will give you the listing of files plus some information about those files. The permissions, the owner, the group, the file size, when it was last modified, and the file name. And last is sudo. And sudo, this lets you become a root user, and you type sudo and then the command that you want, and it'll ask you for your password. You type out the command, and it runs it as root. Now let's talk about some terminal commands that do stuff. If you want to show all of your hidden files and folders, you type defaults, write, com.apple.finder, apple show all files dash bool true and these commands will be in the show notes so don't worry about rushing to write them down that will cause your your finder to show all files even the hidden ones and we'll demonstrate that i'll go ahead and open up a finder window and one thing that you probably have to do after issuing this command is kill all finder that will relaunch finder and now you can see a whole bunch of hidden files and directories in my root directory if you want to undo that you type defaults, write, com.apple.finder, apple show all files, dash bool, false. Then kill all finder. And we no longer see those hidden files. Now let's say you want to change your screenshots file format, by default, it will create a PNG file or a ping, but let's say we want to make that a JPEG. Again, it's a defaults command, write com.apple.screencapture, type JPEG. And then the next time you do a screenshot, it will automatically be a JPEG. Now, you know that drop shadow that shows up on your screenshots? Let's say you want to get rid of that. You type defaults, write com.apple.screencapture, disable shadow, didn't spell it right, shadow, dash bool, true, and then kill all system UI server. And now when you do a screenshot, it will no longer have any type of a drop shadow on it. Uh, let's say we want to create a custom login image message. This time you need to sudo. So you sudo defaults, write slash library slash preferences slash com dot apple dot login window space login window 
text and then enter in some text. It asks me for my password. You don't get any feedback from the defaults command. Um, the proof is in the pudding. The next time I log out, I should see that login message and it'll show up for anybody who tries to log into my Mac. Now, let's say we want to add a spacer to the dock. We do defaults write com.apple.doc persistent dash apps dash array dash add apostrophe curly brace double quotation mark tile type double quotation mark equals double quotation mark spacer dash tile double quotation mark semicolon curly brace apostrophe next you have to kill the doc so you kill all doc and when it returns you'll have a space or a spacer in your doc as you can see here. All right, so that was the last of the defaults command. One more command that you should know about if you think that your Mac is running kind of slow and it might be time for a reboot, just type uptime and you'll get a message telling you how long your Mac has been up and running. In my case, it's been up for four days. Considering this is a Hackintosh, that's actually a pretty long time. I will probably do a reboot in the next day or two, but it's running fine now, so I'll leave it alone. All right, now on our Macs, we're going to install something called Homebrew. Homebrew is billed as the missing package manager for Mac OS. You can use it to install a number of tools and utilities, apps, all kinds of stuff. Mostly, almost all is open source. Uh, Homebrew basically installs stuff that you need that Apple didn't install. Things like Google Chrome. Believe it or not, you can install from Homebrew rather than downloading it from Google. Uh, that makes it easy to run upgrades on all of your stuff all at once because all you do is do brew upgrade and everything gets upgraded. So let's go ahead and get Homebrew installed and then we can see what kind of stuff we can do with it. Now, we're gonna start off. We're here on the Homebrew webpage, brew.sh. We're going to copy uh, a command from the brew homepage and then paste that into a terminal script. So we'll see how that works. We paste that into the terminal, just like so. And we hit enter. And now it will show you what needs to be installed what directories it's going to create. Just press enter. It asks you for your sudo password. So you type in that password and it gets to work. This could take a while depending on the speed of your computer, but uh, just let it do its thing and you'll see how it works at the end. If you don't have the Xcode command line tools, it will download those and install them because it does require them. That's because Homebrew actually compiles software for you. Okay, we've got Homebrew installed. Now let's go ahead and see something it can install for us. I'll go ahead and use this to install Chrome. And you'll see that it downloads the files that it needs. And then it installs Google Chrome for me. So I don't have to do it manually and it can run updates and I can uninstall it quite easily. So that is Homebrew. We're not done with it yet. So stay tuned for the next segment of this, uh, of this episode where we'll use Homebrew to install a video, I'll call it a video editing tool. You don't really edit your video, but you do edit a lot of the aspects of it. So let's move on to that. 
Okay, now we're going to install a tool that uh, is pretty useful if you ever do any any work with video or audio files. This will allow you to change a lot of uh, a lot of aspects of those files, like change codecs, change frame rates, a number of of different things. It's a really deep topic that maybe I'll dive deeper into at a later time. But for now, we're going to just scrape the surface of FFmpeg. So let's go ahead and get started with installing FFmpeg. Now we've already installed Homebrew, and that's what we need to put FFmpeg on our machines. It's not installed by default. So we type brew install FFmpeg. It will update Homebrew, which can take a, a short amount of time. And you can actually watch some of the commands flash across the top of the terminal screen, which is pretty cool. It's going to install the dependencies for FFmpeg, the X264 codec and the XVID codec. Then it uh, installs FFmpeg. In typical homebrew fashion, everything is beer. So it pours it from the seller, then it installs it, downloads the tools that it needs, and it's done. So let's move on to using it. Okay, FFmpeg can do a lot. One of the most useful ways we can use FFmpeg is to do video conversion. Uh, let's say, for example, we have a video that we downloaded from our iPhone running iOS 11. That video could and probably is in the HEVC video format. That's a great video codec. It's compact. It is very high quality, but it's not universally supported. So let's say we need to convert that to H.264, which is fairly universally supported. Here's how we do that. We're going to go into our terminal, and you can see I've got a finder window up above. That's simply because if you don't already know this, it's a lot easier to drag a file onto the terminal window to get the path to that file than to type the full file name. Now we've got FFmpeg installed, so we don't need to do brew install FFmpeg. We've already done that, if you've been following along. So now I'll go ahead and show you the conversion first, and then I'll show you what it actually did. To convert it, we type FFmpeg, dash I for input. I'll drag my .mov file, which is the HEVC file, into the terminal dash map zero, dash C, which stands for codec, A, copy, dash C, colon V, lib x264. That's for the H.264 video format. Now for my output file, I'll drag my original file back down, and I want to change this to an M4V, so I'll put M4V as the file suffix. I hit enter, it asks me, because I've already done this once, do I want to overwrite the file? I will say yes, I want to overwrite. And it goes to work frame by frame, uh, several frames at a time actually, converting that file, basically restreaming it into a new file. So you can see the frames, the frames per second, the size, the bit rate. It's a variable bit rate. It's also a variable frame rate. As you can see, then it finishes. And we'll do FF probe to check our formats. FF probe, my original file. And you can see that it's HEVC for the video encoder. The audio is AAC, which is fine. Now let's look at the new file, ffprobe, drag my new file into the terminal, hit enter, and now you can see that it's h.264 and AAC. So that is FFmpeg. That's just one way you can use this tool. There are plenty of others, and as I said, maybe we'll dive into that in a later episode. So, All right, folks, that's all for this episode of Terminal Tinkering. Thanks for joining me. I hope to see you again soon. 
If you have any comments, feedback, or suggestions, please drop me a line at jeffb at macobserver.com, or you can find me on Twitter as at Clefmeister. As always, keep tinkering and have fun. <laughs>